If you have HPV, you may be wondering, can it come back after it's been cleared? Well, today we're talking about just that. I'm Dr. Perkins, I'm a board certified OBGYN, and we're here to help to educate you so that you can live your best life. In today's video, we'll be talking about what exactly is HPV, how do you clear the HPV infection, can HPV return after it has cleared, and how do you prevent HPV from happening again? HPV is a very, very common infection, and in fact, it affects millions and millions and millions of people every day across the world. It is an infection that transmits from person to person with genital to genital contact. However, really, HPV can be passed from oral sex as well as vaginal or anal sex. In general, most people will clear HPV from their bodies without really doing much. It clears completely on their own. But this is not across the board, it's not 100%. In fact, maybe about nine out of 10 people may clear this infection on their own. Clearing the infection, I've noted in practice as well in, as in research, when you're younger, the likelihood of you clearing that infection is a lot greater than when you're older. In fact, medical professionals in the past would offer pap smears and complete them as early as 12 or 13 when sexual intercourse has started. We've learned a lot more about the activity of HPV and because of that, our recommendation now is to get pap smears to test for HPV no earlier than the age of 21. And in the next few years, we might change that as well. And the reason behind this is that we know that a teenager is likely to clear the infection and have no residual effects from HPV much better than someone in their 20s or 30s 40s or 50s. Now, while there isn't a direct cure for HPV, we also haven't figured out the formula to help you best clear it out of your system. In general, I recommend keeping your body as healthy and balanced as possible. That means you're eating well, that you're living a lifestyle that includes movement and activity and just being conscious of how you're treating your system. If HPV remains in your system for a long period of time, which we don't have a number for, but if it remains in your system, it may start to affect the cells of your body. So. In general, your cells can go from a state of being completely normal, functioning well, doing everything they should, to a state of being cancerous. No one would want cancer to occur, and because of that, knowing your HPV status is important, as well as following the guidelines to help to prevent getting HPV or reduce the likelihood of your HPV worsening. There is one specific type of HPV that can be cured and that is HPV warts. If warts are on your skin, I've seen warts that could be from a simple wart, cauliflower-like, one area, almost like a skin tag, to warts being over the entire genital area and growing so fast and so tremendously that it actually covers the entire vulva region and the entire vagina. With that, warts can be removed surgically, or we can apply different solutions on them to help to burn them and get rid of them. Now in general, if you remove the physical nature of the ward from the area, HPV may still be in the skin, may still be in the surrounding area, may still be in your body. However, warts can be removed. Outside of that scenario, HPV is not curable. So the question of the hour here is, if HPV has been cleared, what happens? How do we try to get this done? And what do we do afterwards? HPV, we're still trying to understand in the medical community. We still have so many questions that have been unanswered. As we learn more in the research community, I'd be more than happy to share that with you. In the meantime, if HPV has been cleared, meaning that you've had surgical management of your cervical cells that helps to remove HPV from your system, or it completely cleared on its own, know that we are still at a point in medicine where we think that HPV can still be dormant in your system on the background, so it doesn't show up on your pap smears anymore, or it can be cleared and you can be reinfected by being reintroduced to HPV. Your pap smear may show any of 200 different types of HPV strains. So let's think about this scenario. 
you have a sexual partner now, partner number one, HPV was detected on your pap smear. After two or three years, HPV has cleared because it's no longer showing on your pap smear. Now you may have a new partner, partner number two. That partner may bring with him a different strain of HPV. Your pap smear after now being with partner number two may now become abnormal again. At that point, that abnormality with HPV may be due to the same HPV that you had from partner number one, or it may be from the new partner and the new strains that that partner may have. In general, most of us don't necessarily know the strain that is infecting us, but know that with each partner, you may be exposed to a different set of HPV. So a new infection or a new notification that you have HPV may be due to a different strain altogether. Another scenario that I'd like for you to consider at this point is if you're still with the same partner and that partner still has HPV with them because there's no cure and men are not treated. In fact, men are not tested for HPV at all. And so if you're with the same person in a monogamous relationship, but he continues to have HPV on his penis, each and every time that you have sex, you may have a reintroduction of HPV to your system. So some people may continually show HPV on every single pap smear because they're with the same partner and the partner still has the virus and that virus is continually being transmitted to your system and therefore impacting your pap smear results. I hope this makes sense so far and that you're enjoying our conversation. If so, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And while you're at it, please click that bell so that you can be notified when new videos are on the platform in our service here, right here on YouTube. HPV can be very devastating. And so with that, sometimes you may feel like you want to do something to help to make things better. If you are in a monogamous relationship, this might be difficult because there are no treatments for HPV. So one thing that you can consider doing is maybe using condoms with further sexual activity. The second thing is that you can have unprotected sex, but really work with your medical provider to be sure that you are listening to their recommendations and knowing exactly when to get your pap smears done or to intervene if something might be needed like surgical intervention. If you are in that scenario where you're constantly being introduced to the HPV through your partner, there are different things that can happen if you're continually being exposed. The first is that HPV, if high risk, may cause cancers of the mouth, the throat, the tongue, the lips, the anus, the vulva, the vagina, the cervix, and others as well. Knowing the type of HPV will help you know if you are at risk for cancer. Those types of HPV are literally called high risk. If you have a low risk version, then you don't necessarily have to worry as much because it's not been shown to cause cancer in your body. However, sometimes they could cause genital warts or you may have HPV that has absolutely no impact on your system. The virus is just there. If your HPV has been dormant in the system, essentially what this means is that HPV may present on the surface of your cervix. So when your pap smear is being collected, we can see that in the cells. Sometimes it might become non-active or latent in your system so that even though cells are being collected in the pap smear, it is not being shown there. It is very hard to distinguish between whether or not the HPV is dormant in your system or if it's an actual new infection. So knowing your history and paying attention to your activities sexually will be very helpful in the conversation that you will have with your medical provider about your risks and what exactly is happening with the HPV in your body specifically. I have a few tips today to help you prevent getting HPV. Number one, use condoms all the time, especially with a new partner. Secondly, I would recommend getting the Gardasil vaccine. This vaccine is specific to HPV and is recommended to everyone, females and males, as early as the age of nine and to as high as the age of 45. Thirdly, if you are female, I recommend getting regular pap smears. This is important because this is the main way that we can detect HPV in your body. Lastly, if you smoke, I recommend no longer smoking and quitting. And the reason is we've seen so much more 
HPV infection in people who smoke versus people who don't. I hope these tips have been very helpful for you today. As a free gift, I have an ebook that I'd like to offer you. The link below will give you a free copy of my hormone balancing book, Hormones Don't Lie. Please check it out. I'll be happy to share it with you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for joining in the conversation. And thanks for wanting to learn more about your body. I'm Dr. Perkins. I'm a board certified OBGYN, and it's always a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you.